Welcome back to Tip Tuesday, guys. And it seems the biggest tip that we should be giving ourselves, especially if you're an influencer or someone that dabbles in social media, is body shaming definitely can get you in a lot of trouble. So there's a lot of controversy at the moment around Mr. Donovan Tooth and panda clothing and how this whole kind of situation has really been put under the spotlight because I mean, let's just be honest, <laughs> this guy has, has publicly gone out, even though he has, a, he has a private account, he's gone off on his stories and basically just completely taken a very aggressive approach to his opinion, well, it was basically he's just infringing and enforcing his opinion on what, what fitness is or what fitness people that are like doing modeling, should look like or what they should be doing or, or how they actually should be um, should just be presenting themselves and there's a lot of different ways that you can kind of look at this topic but at the end of the day like I just found it very sad because this guy is passionately or I could say passionately he's getting angry literally about the way that someone else is looking and I the thing is, I don't understand how it's any of his business, how like someone represents themselves or a brand chooses to rep represent themselves. So to me, like, look, it's if you want the healthy does is definitely not lean. So if you are wanting to to be healthy, um, it normally isn't at like a very, very low percent body fat. But then again, whose business is it really um, for you to be telling someone how they should or shouldn't be looking? Um, and then just to get so passionate about it, it really kind of just completely blew my mind. But the controversy aside, if you'd like me to, to give you my actual opinion on the entire thing, and if you want me to give an angle on it from maybe a health perspective, or anything like that uh, let us know send me a message uh, I'll probably speak my mind more openly on on my personal uh, Instagram account but because this is train me Academy I obviously want to keep things nice and balanced and yeah get back to our our series so at the moment we are busy going through how you can build your own um, program so if you were to be doing programming for yourself what does that look like so the last video we spoke about in depth of what a warm-up should look like what the main set exercises should be doing what you should be doing there and then also the cool down then we went over the benefits of those three today we're going to expand and kind of nitpick a little bit more about what exercises that you should be doing um, which ones that you should kind of stay away from overdoing so that you get the results so that you're taxing your body and you're actually asking enough from your body that it triggers the response that you need in order to get the result that you're looking for but also making sure that you don't overdo it and then get symptoms of overtraining where you can have things like adrenal fatigue where you can start getting injuries uh, that's definitely what we're trying to steer away from. So before I jump on and get into more in detail with that, I'd just like to say it would be really nice if we get some more questions in on our Tip Tuesday. You guys are acting like you, like, like you know everything or you just have no idea what to ask. I love the interaction, guys. I love getting asked questions. So please, when we do post um, our story the day before, or even if you have any question that comes up during the week, pop Train Me Academy a message because I promise you we are a good, credible source where you can get a clear, concise answer to whatever it is that you're looking for. Um, and we're offering you that free of service. So make use of it. Let's get into our programming. So to understand the best kind of programming, if you're a beginner, there's, there's something that I definitely have to say. Keep it simple, stupid. The most basic and boring exercise plan 
can give you fantastic results if you are sticking to the correct kinds of principles. Uh, so by that I mean if you are doing the, the correct amount of reps, if you're doing the correct amount of sets, and a big one if you are sticking to your rest periods. So it's more about getting those three things right than it is about the actual movements. There's a lot of flash and entertainment that is coming up in the fitness industry where people are doing more complex movements. They're adding rotations and jumps and, and just stuff that is actually fluff at the end of the day because what you need to do is you need to keep your body in a certain zone for a certain period of time and that's what is going to evoke change um, from the systems, from the hormonal systems in your body uh, but also from the, the muscular system in order to either be losing weight, gaining weight or whatever it is that your goal um, should be. So rather keep the movements really simple and focus your attention on getting um, your sets, reps and rest right then doing like crazy movements that you might not be doing correctly and that are not actually going to be benefiting you that much at the end of the day. So that's a really good tip for the first kind of step moving into making your own exercise program. Uh, the other thing that I would like to add to that is rather do less amounts of exercises and add in extra sets then try and extrapolate this program where you're doing 10 15 i don't know sometimes people are programming 20 different kinds of movements in an exercise routine and then you're just kind of getting lost in too many like details it's going to take you long to put a program like that together you're going to have to constantly go back and check okay like what's next what is this movement again you might forget what the movement looks like you might have to rewatch videos it's just a stupid process of having to always like you complicating things always go back and checking always go back and checking where you realistically don't need to be making it that complicated um so again keep it simple stupid the exercises that you want to be basing your programs around there are three foundation exercises that are very good compound exercises we've talked about we've spoken about what complex com Pound, sorry, what compound exercises are in a previous Tip Tuesday. Um, and there are, there are these three that are basically your foundation movements when it comes to all of the large movers or the large muscles in your body. Those three movements are your squat, your bench press, and your deadlift movements. Okay, If you'd like to gauge how much uh, or how strong your lower body is, it's really good to do an either 10 rep max test, a 5 rep max test, a 3 rep max test, or a 1 rep max test of your squat. If you want to find out how strong your lower body is. I think I have mentioned this in a previous Tip Tuesday. If you'd like to find out how strong your back muscles are, it's really good to do a 1 rep max or 3 or 5 or 10 rep max test of your deadlift movement. And if you'd like to find out how strong your upper body is, uh, your 1 rep max 10 or 3 or 5 uh, bench press would be the one to go to and so with those fitness you can do those as fitness tests to make sure that you're working out in the correct zones that I've given you in previous tip Tuesdays when we were talking more about knowing which kind of uh, programs that you should that you can pick or making sure that you're working out in the right zone but now also in this series when we're talking about building your own exercise plan you should base your if you're doing a split routine you should base your exercises around those prime three movements okay so what i mean by that if you are doing any sort of upper body work make sure that you include a bench press and also start with it so i also spoke about last time like don't pre-exhaust your muscles before you do the hard complex movements that are using multiple muscles and going over multiple joints so start with those, but also you can do different variations of it. So you can do a normal bench press if you have access to resistance uh, equipment. 
you can if you've got dumbbells or kettlebells or whatever you can literally just mimic that movement uh, with whatever equipment that you have available to you uh, what else you can do is if you have no equipment you can still mimic the movement so what are you doing when you bench press you're lying on your back you're taking your elbows quite close to your side you're pulling or you're allowing a weight to to move close to your chest and then you're pushing it away so a body weight movement of that exact um, the exact movement pattern is just to do a push-up so you can do a push-up on the ground if you want to progress the push-up you can uh, put your feet up somewhere and then the more that you change the angle so for example if you do a push-up your feet are actually a normal push-up your feet are below where your shoulder level would be if you pull your feet up and you actually have a straight line between where your shoulders are and your feet are that's going to increase the resistance so make it slightly harder and then as you move up and uh, you get your knees higher than your than your shoulder point that's just going to make it more challenging uh, for for you to do so for example if you want to be working in the muscle building zone where i find most people actually want to work out that means you're going to be doing between six and twelve repetitions and again, you're going to be making sure that you hit in that rep range by the amount of things that you can actually do. What's up, my girl, Jamila? Thank you for joining us. So what I mean by that is it's not a simple fact of, okay, I need to do 12 repetitions of a certain amount. Um, well, it's 12 repetitions, and that just means that I'm going to be doing 12 reps of a push-up. And say I would be able to do 20 reps, but I'm just going to stop at 12, and then all of a sudden, magically, I'm just going to start um, building muscle. I'm going to be in the muscle building zone. That is not at all how it works. You need to get or change the resistance, either the resistance force or change the angle in the push-up example that I gave you so that you physically won't be able to do more repetitions than your um, 6 to 12 if you want to be in the muscle building zone. So for example, if you put your feet in a push-up example, if you put your feet right in line with your shoulders and you're able to bang out 14 to 15 reps and you want to be building muscle, what I would suggest is the next set, lift your feet higher above where your shoulder point is and then see how many repetitions if you can get that you can get if you hit in between 8 and 12 and then you can't go really anymore then you found the correct zone and then you're in the muscle building zone to pair it up with the things i spoke about earlier that would be getting the reps right you should then take no longer than a minute and a half break so between 30 seconds and one and a half minutes, you should be going into your next repetition uh, or your next set, sorry, and you should be doing between well, more than three sets, but probably don't go more than five, five sets per exercise. I can explain why in, in, in more detail in maybe a future video, but I don't want to get too stuck up on that. So we're back in our philosophy of we're thinking what kind of exercises should I do so again start with your your foundation movements so I've given a nice example about upper body training let's talk a little bit about if you're going to be doing a lower body training or things to help strengthen your legs then you should revolve that session around a squat movement so if you're going to be doing squats so like a bar bar squat where you're adding resistance force to your back then that's a really really good place to start and then in subsequent exercises you can do different variations of that movement so if you had a conventional gym you can maybe do some sort of leg extension exercise where you're focusing more just on um, the thigh area depending on what you want to do but what i would really suggest is stick to movements that mimic what you would do in in actual in your actual day so lunges are beautiful exercises they also mimic the squat to a certain degree because what they're doing is you're bending your knee into that 90 degree angle um, on and you're putting more emphasis on the one side than you are on the other leg so you can actually get into that muscle building zone by maybe if you only have access to let's just say 10 kilogram weight and let's say if you hold that weight and you do 10 squats you may not be in the right zone 
but then you hold that weight in exactly the same way and you do a lunge and because the emphasis is more on the one leg than it is the other it might just be the change that you need in order to utilize whatever resistance force that you have to make sure that it correlates with the um, with the zone that you want to be working in I hope I'm not confusing you guys with this because I'm going into quite a lot of depth and I'm obviously bringing things that we've learned from previous videos into this video but all of our tip Tuesday videos are on our our page um, and they also soon will, will be available in a podcast form so you can listen to these videos or this information again while you're driving, while you're taking a bath, while you're at the gym, whatever suits you um, so that you can get this information into your brain so that you can start applying it yourself. And so what we're looking to do is for you to take charge of your own physical well-being because we want to empower you. We want you to have the comfortable, the, the, that kind of comforting feeling that when you are going to the gym or when you are doing a workout, whether you're doing your own programming, which is what I'm teaching you how to do now, or whether you are picking programs off of YouTube or anything like that, that you're picking the right kind of exercises for what your goals are so that we can eliminate time wasting and then we can eliminate the just the demotivation that kind of comes with that so those so i've given examples for your upper body training so i would say move like uh, molded around your uh, your bench press movement you're welcome jamila i'm glad that that you needed this I'm, I'm i'm hoping this is helping a lot more people but i appreciate the immediate feedback and thank you for joining me live here so if you are um, if you are looking to do an upper body uh, session, then revolve it around the bench press movement. If you're looking to do a lower body session, then revolve it around your squat movement. And if you are looking to do a like a core session or anything to do with your back muscles, then revolve it around a deadlift. But this is the T and C that I was speaking about earlier. So deadlifts is one of the most taxing movements of the body so in particular the the barbell deadlift or deadlift with a resistance force the reason being is with a squat you're challenging your all of your abdominal muscles um, to to stay in an upright position with the force kind of pushing down on 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 your skeletal system like on your on your spine and the, the abdominal muscles are quite good at doing that However, when you are doing a deadlift, the resistance force is slightly in front of you because the bar is either going to be in front of you or your dumbbells are going to be slightly in front of you. And because they are slightly in front of you, they're kind of in front of that, um, of that line of, of symmetry that kind of moves through your body and the line of equilibrium. It's literally pulling your body out of an equilibrium state or out of a balanced state. And in order to maintain good posture and, and, and a healthy uh, spine, a nice flat back, your muscles and your central nervous system in particular is working extremely hard to keep that torso nice and upright, to stop the shoulders from rolling forward, to stop the spine from bending, because we always need to look after our spine. The spine is the number one most important thing um, besides obviously the brain with the, the, the skull with the brain in it but it is something that you really really need to make sure that you are not going to injure whilst doing an exercise plan and what deadlifts do if you do more than say one deadlift in session in a week which i wouldn't advise that you do one deadlift session a week because that resistance force is pulling your torso and all of the muscles um, in your posterior and your anterior chain are literally being trying to be forced forward and pulled out of alignment and you're obviously fighting by pulling your shoulder blades back by holding your core nice and tight and by keeping your chest upright as, as much or as upright as you can and in doing that it taxes your central nervous system um, a lot which is great because you're burning a lot of calories by doing that and you're activating a lot of muscles and you're you're using muscles that span more than one joint 
that's all fun stuff and that's all great but if you overdo it what the 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 bad part of 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 this whole thing is you can set yourself up for not fully recovering from a session which can then lead to an injury um, it can also lead to um, you like having some sort of adrenal fatigue because you the body in order to cope with that um, the condition that you've put it in you are going to release a lot more of different kinds of hormones and things like that um, and you don't want to overstimulate that system because then you can start running into overtraining problems, injuries, um, and getting sick. So keep that in mind when you are doing your, your, so because there are so many muscles in the back, so your legs, there's a dense amount of muscles in your lower body and your legs, and if you're talking the upper body and your torso, there's more muscles or muscle density in your back than there is in the front. So if you're doing, say, a split routine and you're doing one back session in a week, I would suggest that you can do a deadlift in that session, start with it. But if you're doing more than one back session in a week, say you're doing two, that the second session doesn't have anything to do um, with deadlifts. Uh, if you are advanced or if you're an advanced exerciser, you could maybe get away with doing stiff legged deadlifts um, and deadlifts in the same week. But then I wouldn't say push the stiff legged deadlifts too much. Um, because again, you can overly tax your body and then you can run into a bunch of problems. From there, any movement where you are reaching to grab something and pulling it towards yourself, any row movements, I would definitely advocate for working your back muscles, okay? So whether you're doing a barbell row or dumbbell rows, um, those, are, those are excellent exercises to, to work out the back. And just like I've given examples for the other ones, um, if you don't have equipment, if you don't have equipment for, um, and you wanna do your back session, one of the best exercises for working your entire back is simply by finding a bar somewhere um, or something above your head and doing pull-ups. Pull-ups are a fantastic exercise um, to work the back, to burn a lot of calories, and you can do pull-ups almost every day. It's not gonna tax your central nervous system like the deadlift will, will do that I described earlier. So guys, I hope that really, really helps you out. Um, I hope that that gives you a lot more insight into programming and, and how you would program for yourself um, if you were to be wanting to put together your own exercise routine, because that's what this series is about. So again, if you guys wanna talk a little bit more about or find out what my real personal opinion is on the whole Donovan tooth situation um, and also panda clothing because I've heard inclination that panda clothing is actually owned by Donovan and he's just um, represent here he's kind of representing the brand as if he's an ambassador or something like that but he actually owns the brand and then obviously if you've seen in all of the scandal that panda clothing has come out and said that they have disciplined um, the Donovan tooth and they're not associating themselves with him or blah 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 but obviously it could just be a very sneaky little uh, business trick where if he actually owns the brand he could be uh, he could be from a company perspective saying that but <laughs> if he actually owns it then he's literally just saying that he's disassociating with himself which is obviously stupid but obviously businesses are entities and then he's his own private entity so it seems like he has a business account um, if he does and panic clothing i'm not sure and and obviously he the things that he said that is getting slandered is i think on his personal account anyway yes jamila i would love for for you to get started with this as well um, it's going to be a lot of fun and so the whole thing of train me academy is we learn by doing and i think that that's the best kind of learning but i also think it's incredibly fun because it's not just learning about our oh, theory 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 uh, and then not realizing how you can actually apply this knowledge. When you start to apply it, it starts to become fun and exciting because if you're doing the right things and you're doing the, putting the right testing measures in place, you're gonna be seeing the results coming. And as you see the results coming, that's gonna excite you and it's also gonna motivate you to keep going. And that is basically in a nutshell what Train Me Academy is all about. Quick shout out for this weekend. 
we are hosting a workshop in Cape Town. So unfortunately, it's only available in Cape Town because it is the first of its kind because we are now on level one. It's going to be an in-person workshop and I've only limited it to six people. So you're going to get really individualized and attention, but it's also becoming more obviously COVID friendly that way. Uh, so that is this weekend. It is going to be a workshop on Saturday and on Sunday. The workshop runs from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. each day. We're going to be going through, basically, it's going to be a boot camp version of the stuff that I've been going through with you in Tip Tuesday, but without the fluff. It's going to be a lot more to the point. And obviously, I'm not going to be talking about other topics that I bring in and questions and things like that. I've put together a very concise manual with all of the information without any of the rubbish that, that you'd find somewhere else. So I'm literally going to laser focus on the specific things that is really important if you were to be become your own personal trainer and um, make the best kind of programs or just follow the best kind of program so that you are getting the results and you're not getting distracted with any other nonsense. So that is happening this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. There's one spot available. There's one spot left. So we've got five people coming so far. We have one spot available. So if that is you and you're in Cape Town, jump in on that spot. If you would like me to do this um, in a different region, so in Joburg, in Durban, in PE, whatever, um, contact me if you're interested. And then let's see if we can market to the area and get enough people um, together. And if we can, then I have no problem traveling to your town or wherever you are um, and giving one of these workshops in person because there's nothing like the real thing, guys. There's nothing like actually being with someone where you can actually feel the energy of someone where I can take you through the work practically because that's what this weekend's also gonna be a lot about. There's obviously gonna be the theory, but I'm gonna be doing very practical work with you. Um, so I'm literally gonna be taking you through the stuff that I'm gonna be teaching so that you can feel it as well. And on top of that, if it's not good enough by at that, like if, if that still isn't good enough, I'm also gonna give you access to the six week challenge where that extrapolates what I'm gonna be teaching you in the workshop over six weeks so that you can literally live it and get it into your routine so that you just have no excuse to not be doing the exact right kind of work because each one of those programs in that six week um, challenge is designed and made by me. So get involved. There's one spot left for this weekend. Tell me if you'd like me to do in another spot. So like in Joburg, uh, Durban or whatever. But otherwise, I'm running this workshop exclusively in Cape Town because that's where I am geographically once a month. So we've got one. There's one spot left for this one. We've got another one coming up um, next month. Thank you so much for joining me on Tip Tuesday. I hope this has been really helpful to you. If it has, then please give us likes, comment, but most of all, share this video so that we can continue to help more people. We can grow the business and obviously it just it helps me and means the world to me as well because I love doing this stuff. I just love teaching and helping people. Enjoy the rest of your Tuesday, guys. I will speak to you next week, Tuesday, for another Tip Tuesday.